Hello and welcome to the 145 Rural Podcast, where we are here to strengthen music careers and communities one song at a time. And now here's your host, Jacob Wing. Yay! Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to today's episode. Really happy to have you here and have everybody with us. Today is one of my favorite episodes, and I cannot wait to get started on this. Uh, We're going to go over today talking about the myths and the misconceptions that we think are going to change our sound in some huge way, but usually don't. And we wind up investing hundreds of thousands of dollars into this and then wind up not having the results that we want and investing our money in a way that can kind of be backwards when you could have made bigger changes earlier. So we're going to break down first and foremost uh, confirmation bias. And then I'm going to talk about some references here on YouTube that aren't me that are really great that you should check out if this is something that you're worried about or want to avoid. Then we're going to break down some red flags and go on to that so that you'll know what to look out for. And then we are going to talk about how to avoid those. Of course, you know, we really pride ourselves here on if we're going to present you with a problem and talk about issues, there should be some solutions to it. So we're going to get to those and talk about how you should avoid that. And then we got a special little present for you at the end about how to build your priority of your sound priority list and something you can use, a tool that we're going to give you for free just to accomplish that because I know that's going to solve a lot of headaches going forward and things that I wish I had, but I don't, and I never did, and I wasted money, but we'll get into that at the end of the video. So let's get started here with confirmation bias. And I know you've heard this term probably a billion times, but it's good to just go over really quickly, especially when it comes to, we're talking about our money being invested in something. As soon as you make that decision to pull the trigger and put your money towards something, it becomes really clear really fast that you've lost all objectivity and outside thought processes when it comes to this. And you really need to be aware of that. But the thing that to go over and talk about with that is that confirmation bias can really be your own worst enemy. You can stick with something and believe and convince yourself that this is great. This is changing everything. This is improving my sound in the way I really want it to. But in the end, it's, it's hurting you and you've wasted money when you could have put that money towards something better. And, and all confirmation bias really is, is a tendency to look for info and, and cherry pick the things that we want to, to believe that will support our belief that this has made me better, this has improved my sound, when really that might not be the case. That might be just, you know, buying into that myth. So I really want to talk about two people here on YouTube that have focused down and spent some time about, you know, diving deep into those things that can really, really bite you and that we have bought into as a culture and as two musicians that we think are make a big difference and that we're told we have to have the best end or this version or that version, but just simply isn't true. Um, the first person I want to touch upon, and I think this guy has one of the best channels on YouTube when it comes to being a guitar player or even a musician and being honest with yourself and breaking things down like this. His name is Jim Lil. And of course, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, those are down below. You can, I linked one of his episodes, one of my favorite ones, and you can go take a listen to that. Uh, but he really goes deep into what really makes a difference. He records everything, gives A-B tests, puts the information on his own website that you can run to and listen to and actually hear for yourself that, wow, I really thought this was a bigger thing than it wasn't. And I mean, it's really geared towards guitar players because we're probably the biggest idiots out there when it comes to making up things that aren't really important to craft your sound, but he breaks down, uh, you know, are strings important? How much does the wood in your, in your guitar make a difference? How much do pickups make a difference? You know, he goes line by line and piece by piece. How much is your amplifier, uh, amplifier? How about the speakers? And he gives results and shows everything. And it's just wonderful that somebody took the time to do this and really show us 
what makes a difference, what's important in your chain of gear to complete the sound that you want. And I'd really advise if you have a, just a couple of minutes to go watch any of his things. But that's just one, one part, one aspect. And another great reference I love to talk about is uh, Glenn Fricker. He, if you do any kind of sound production or mixing and you like heavier music, you probably run into his stuff. He's, he's a little bit controversial, for sure, but the stuff he does is fantastic. And he lately, especially in the last six months, has been putting out these amazing videos, making people be honest about what's making the difference in their sound. He... And he even calls himself out and you can see the change he's done from what he's learned over this time. If you started out earlier watching his videos, he always has a big backline of expensive high-end tube amps and all those kind of things. And he's gone down, one of the video that I've referenced below is him breaking down the difference between a solid amp and a tube amp. And if you don't know what that is, that is just an amp that has a tube in it is older and it uses the ta the tube to do the amplification of the sound. And we as guitar players have bought into the fact that this makes the warmth, this makes the sound, this was what makes it really great. And then he just, he gives you a straight up, you know, we're playing heavy distorted music here and it really doesn't make that big of a difference. And he gives the A, B and, and C versions of it, puts them on his channel, makes people choose. Can you tell the difference? Please tell me which one has tube and which one's a solid state and lets his audience do polls and comes back you know, the next week saying, hey, here's the results. And nobody, you know, is getting every one of them right, thinking that, that they know what that sound would be. They know how to pick it out and it doesn't make a difference. People are spending tens of thousands of dollars on things that don't make a difference. And I don't want you to be one of those people. So let's avoid that. So the point of that is that these two people have done great work diving deep into these smaller niche things. But as you are an artist and you're watching this and you're wanting to avoid these pitfalls, I want to do a broader overview of everything. Take these ideas that these guys are doing and give us a system to work with so that we're not doing it when it just comes to guitars or anything, when it comes to all of our gear, to our entire sound overall, so that we can all save some money that way. So the next thing I want to talk about, first and foremost, is talk about the red flags that you need to look at, those things that really make the biggest difference as you're looking out for these things, those, those things that you're going to see or hear that will kind of give you an indicator of, yeah, I'm probably about to start using confirmation bias. Hey, I'm going to start buying into this. Hey, I'm going to lose my objectivity and just throw money at this because I'm all in. If you're hearing these things, it's probably somebody that's trying to sell you something and that's fine. That's part of the world we live in now, but you just need to be honest with yourself. And the more that you hear these or see these, you just need to be instantly have your ears per perk up and know, okay, there's a problem here. We got to deal with this. And I need to get some objective outside in influence on this. Uh, so for the red flags, the first thing I want to talk about, and as an audio engineer <laughs> and anybody that deals in the music world of trying to sell you something, we are the worst at this. And the number, <laughs> the number one thing we do is we use buzzwords. And it's hard because with audio, you don't have a visual component to try to sell to them. We don't have the, the iPhone aspect where we can put it in a very pretty box and you know, present it to you like this is a very fancy, one of a kind thing. You need to invest all your money in this. We have to use fancy buzzwords. And for example, Let's just talk about some of the ones that are trending now that really are getting to us. The biggest one, of course, is that AI. AI is the buzzword for everything. It's become its own selling point. It's, you know, it's generating millions and millions of dollars everywhere in every, every aspect. But the, the honest truth is every time you hear AI, it's rarely, rarely the case that it's actually an artificial intelligence that's doing something. It's usually just something that's programmed to figure out a couple of different variables, or give you a couple different options. That is not AI, it's a lie. That's a buzzword you should instantly perk up and say, no, this is not something I was thinking about. This is something that you're lying to me. The other ones are the ones that we just use as describers, but the problem is that they get used so much they lose any meaning. So it's hard to be honest about, this is really making a difference in my sound. 
And those words are words like this adds warmth. We especially like what we were just referencing earlier, you know, tubes and a guitar amp. You know, you don't get that warmth. You don't get that vintage sound without the tubes. It, you know, or saturation's a really big one. You hear the word saturation, you should be, oh, wait, what? What's that mean? Or width. It gives it depth and width. I mean, these are words that are okay to use, but if they start throwing them around too often, you just need to be honest with yourself. Your ears need to be the gauge here, not your mind being fed these words. And you should be, if anybody's like, I just need you to stop saying words right now and let me use my ears to hear the difference here. Um, after buzzwords, another huge red flag, of course, is going to be before and after. And we see this all the time in advertising and people trying to sell us things with like weight loss before and after they show you the the big fat guy or the big fat girl and then they'll show you that next one where they've they've dropped 200 300 pounds and oh my goodness whatever this is it caused that and there you your mind makes this direct correlation into that's what caused this and that's almost never the the case um if anybody's showing you something the sound before and after and you're hearing this extremely stark difference like oh i guess i really need this I'm going to give you a real honest truth about working with music and working in the audio world and being a musician. Uh, any good change that comes to your sound, anything that makes that big of a difference is always incremental. It should make a small change. It should add something here or there or pull out a sound that you didn't want, but it's always incremental. If something's making that drastic of a sound, they're lying to you. That is not an honest view into that. So... Always be aware of that. Uh, the next one, of course, is tradition. And <laughs> as we're talking about guitar tones, we're, like I said, the worst about this. Chasing these tones from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s to get these legendary tones. But when it comes to things, people telling you that this is the only way to do it. This is the way they've always done it. You have to have this sound. This is the only way to achieve this. You have to remember the people that made those sounds, the legends that we're chasing these tones of. At that time, they weren't syncing the old sounds. They weren't looking for something that was old. They were out there buying the new things and getting the best chance they could to differentiate themselves and stand apart and make the best sound they could. So don't really buy into this it sounded back then, or I have to have this sound, you know, keep an eye over like there might be a new, better, cheaper version of that. So after tradition, the next thing to talk about is direct ads. And I know it kind of feels like this might be part of the things we we're talking about before, but what I'm talking about here is when you really want something and you're trying to convince yourself to spend a larger amount of money than you're normally used to, or really comfortable just tossing out and being gone, we will do this thing where you think you want this, so you just need that little extra push over the edge. And you'll seek out those direct ads from the company itself or somebody that is involved with the company. And that'll be the thing that pushes you over. When they, those things are really just propaganda and not giving you an objective look into what the real change is or how it's really going to affect your sound. Um, Especially if you start seeing like schematics or like tech videos, those kind of things where it's got the fancy graphics, that might be a good time to step away and just be like, I'm not getting an objective look at this and I'm starting to buy into things that maybe maybe I shouldn't be because I'm I'm believing things that don't exist. Like why am I getting a 3D amazing graphic of this this one pedal and it just changes the sound a little bit? I don't think that's something I need, but when you're in that mode, they know that you're looking for that last reason to, to pull the trigger. And that's a great way to do it. So if you're starting to seek out things like that, going directly to the source, that's usually a good hint that maybe I, I shouldn't be doing this. I should be going to a different thing to get an objective look at this or sound. Um, and lastly, which kind of ties into the direct ads is sponsorships. And I am not saying that people should not be sponsored to avoid anybody that it has sponsored. Usually, if they're involved with them, for the most part, they've done their due diligence or they're already using that product or, you know, they've tried it out and they really do like it. Uh, but they, that is their own form of, you know, confirmation bias. And you don't really want to use that as a source for the most part. You can use it as a consideration of, okay, so this person that I trust and know uses this, I'm going to dig a little deeper. It should never be the bottom line or the, okay, good enough for me. It should just be a beginning point. But anybody, and it, 
just make sure that if somebody is shilling you something and you're not exactly sure why they're so into it and they're not being open about it, you can dig a little deeper just to see if they have a sponsorship from that company or usually, uh, especially in the YouTube world or anything like that, people have gotten really good about being open and honest. Like, hey, I'm sponsored by them, but I'm going to give you my honest opinion. And so just be aware of that. Um, so those are the red flags. Now we're going to move on to, since we presented that problem to you, we're going to talk about how to avoid those problems. And that's kind of a, a huge thing we need to go over. But let's talk about number one on how to avoid getting into this, this loop and being a sucker. Um, and the first thing you really got to do is just be honest with yourself. And that's first, foremost, number one key. And being honest with yourself means saying, hey, I understand that I have a confirmation bias. I understand I've put money into this. So maybe I'm not being objective and I need to take a step back and just let the sound speak for itself and not my wallet. I need to be okay to sell this as a at a used cost and take the loss. I need to be okay with changing it out and using something different. But being upfront with yourself first and foremost is the only way that you can avoid spending all this money and this time into something that maybe doesn't make a difference. And then being able to take that money and that time and in, invest it in something that is going to make a bigger difference, you know, and you have that resource to be able to do that. That's really a huge thing. Hi there, and welcome to the ad break. We're just going to take a moment to let everybody know about our community of growing members. And if you'd like to be a part of that, just look at the info below and there will be a click there for an email sign up to join in and get your voice heard. As well as you're enjoying this content, please join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the numbers 145 world. There you can join any of our groups. And you can add to the discussion of what topics we will choose that will help you and hopefully future members of our groups, as well as join monthly Q&As and other such benefits. Again, that's patreon.com slash the numbers 145 rural, and we look forward to seeing you there. Now, back to that regularly scheduled episode and enjoy that content. Thanks again. First is personal honesty. The next is digging deeper research, getting more feedback is really super important. And the more sources you can get, the better. And this is what I'm talking about. Go to YouTube, find people that are doing reviews that aren't paid by the company, or even if they are, they're being open and honest about they are, but they like this product because, and if they are, they're going to give you the cons and the downfalls of, or the drawbacks of whatever they're telling you about. Uh, but, you know, the more sources you can get better, you know, check Reddit, check, check the reviews if it's something that has reviews. Uh, anything you can do to get a little more insight really helps. This should never be the, you know, you can go into reviews and find positive, negative on anything. You know, I bought this, this can opener and it ruined my life. It was the word like, and somebody, the next review is going to be this changed everything. It, it saved my marriage. It's a can opener. Just take the good of the bad and learn how to filter through and find the pieces that are relevant to you and what you're doing and apply those. Uh, the next one is a priority list and I call this a sound priority list. And we're at the very end of this video, we're going to go deeper into this. And that's that little wink, wink, that thing that I told you that I, I got you this free little gift here. That's going to help you out and build a sound priority list. And we'll go over that and, and break it down. But, um, just to go a little bit further with that, I've got a copy right here that we can take a look at. And I'm going to just break down the very beginning part of this and we'll talk about that. And then later we'll talk about some more parts of it, but that's going to be a huge, big part of it. But the thing about that is having a sound priority list really helps, you know, puts everything, I guess, as you'd say, in a, a large picture that you can see where the money's going, where it needs to go, and at what I can do to get the biggest return for my money and my time. And having something like that really does make such a huge difference and, and really takes the sitting there and thinking in endless hours of just looking at gear and what's the next thing I'm going to do. Huge, huge win on that. So I'm very proud of this. We put a lot of effort into it. We can't wait to share it with you. And we'll go into that next. But let's move on to the fourth thing that will help us out here. And 
give us a chance to avoid being ripped off or wasting our money. And that is saving it, you know, save money for it, save, put money aside for this, set a time away from it. And I find this one is a huge win. And it's over time, you kind of learn that I know I want this. I've, I've seen the videos. I've seen people using it. I want this. And then you'll go into, like I said, those cycles of trying to confirm it and tell yourself like, here's why I need it. Here's the, oh, it's going to make such a big difference. But if you set it, start saying, I'm going to put the money aside for it. And then you give yourself a little bit of space. So you're working on other projects and you're finding other things to do. And then you're kind of coming back to it. You have a new perspective and a new insight into, is this really going to make that bigger difference? Or was I just getting a little hot headed and a little bit into this when maybe I shouldn't have been, but that time can make all the perspective. I cannot tell you how many times where I thought I was going to for sure buy this piece of gear or, or make this investment and just a little bit of time away, you know, a week, a two, a month. And I was just like, okay, maybe that wasn't the best idea. And I really have other things I need to be focusing on right now. That can make such a big difference. So if you really do want something, just say, well, I might have the money right now, but let's set part of it aside. I've got a couple jobs here. I've got a couple shows and I got, got to do some more work and I've got another paycheck coming in. We'll just put a part here, a part there. And that little bit of time, that little bit of space and not just giving into your instant want and needs. Oh, huge win, huge win. If you can do that. And then of course, number five. And again, going back to who I referenced in the beginning, Mr. Jim Lil and his amazing YouTube channel. This one is the biggest one that you need to put some time into. And it's uh, test recordings, you know, A-B tests. Having two things to listen to is the most important. And if you watch that video that I referenced of his, he goes deep into telling you about how our memories are only really set up to remember things, you know, in vivid detail for about five seconds. And the difference between testing something and changing it and coming back to it and then referencing both of yourself, it's really easy for you to just say, I, I don't know, close enough, or especially if it's something that you're just in your mind trying to confirm and say, I want this. So yeah, this sounds better. Sure. Um, it's not really being honest with yourself, but if you can commit to finding a way to get that recorded, whatever it is, find a way to make a sound recording between what you have and what you want and what you think is going to make a big difference and what you you really have in your hands at the time. Um, that makes such a huge difference. And with some things that we're going to talk about, it's not an easy thing to do. Like if you've already spent money on something such as an instrument and you thought it was going to make such a huge difference and you didn't have, like if you bought it online, you didn't have a chance to play it in your hands and, and hear that and get the feel and see if that's going to make a big difference. But maybe take that in consideration. Maybe find a local place that has a, a version of what you want to play or a friend or a musician that around here that will let you try theirs just for a couple minutes or an hour, try it out. Um, some great places have a uh, return policies, you know, try it for, you know, two weeks or a month. And then if that's not it, send it back. If it has a return policy, that's great. Something you can get in your hands and give a, a chance to get some recordings and hear what the difference is, what the sound is actually like, where your brain can press one button and go back and forth and, and get a yes, no, okay, better, not better. That'll save you a ton of money and ton of time right there. Um, so those are the things I want to talk about how to avoid. Uh, they're great, like I said, a way to save yourself some money and time. And you can, of, of course, go back to watch those videos of Jim Lil and, and Glenn Flicker, Fricker that have great breakdowns of those too. Use, use the resources that are available. So next thing I want to go over here is talking about how to build that, what you said with number three on that last one, how to build your sound priority list. And we're going to go over that. And when we get to this sound priority list, this thing that I told you that we spent a lot of time of, if you find this useful or if you can get any use out of this, by all means, it's free, use it. And please give us a subscribe if it does help you. I and mean, we spent a lot of time putting this together and a lot of effort. And it really helped us out. If you were, have gotten this far and you enjoy it, please give us a like, give us a subscribe. Those things really do help. So, but let's get into this. For what the sounds uh, priority list, we're going to first break down the, the very beginning part. And I'll have a reference here up on screen that we can go over together too. 
But in the very beginning part here, I made a little uh, where to invest first. So basically, uh, if you any, have any kind of experience on YouTube or anything, it's basically just a tier list of what's the biggest thing that you can invest in that's going to make the biggest difference in your sound versus the things lower down the list, which will you can invest in them. They might make a smaller difference and make the sound directly what you want, but they're not going to make the biggest change and not going to give you this, the biggest bang for your buck as you're putting your money towards what's important. So, and of course, this is just a matter of opinion and experience. So let's not get too, too heated with, you know, that doesn't go there or this makes a bigger difference. You know, that's fine. And if that's how you feel, comp I completely understand. And maybe it does, you know, it's, everybody's different, but from the beginning, this is something that if you have on hand and something to look at, it can make a big difference. So the first thing that's on there on the list, number one thing that you can invest money or time into that's going to make the biggest difference is lessons, courses, and skills. So those are the things that if you haven't quite got them, nothing else on the list, nothing else you buy or purchase is going to make any difference. You can't make your voice sound better if it if you don't have the skills and haven't put the work into it. If you're playing an instrument such as a piano or bass or a guitar, it doesn't matter if you haven't put the time and skills and effort into learning your scales and your chords and doing that kind of work. Every piece of gear you buy doesn't really mean anything in the world. So that's why it's number one and first and foremost. And the great thing about this is I put lessons, courses, and then skills, like with lessons and courses, usually you're going to spend some of your money on that. And it is a great investment, but also with skills, there's so many resources uh, all around with Google, Reddit, uh, YouTube here is one of the best sources where you can invest that time and get a return for nothing because people put it out there to help you out, to help you grow. I mean, morons that spend tons of time just giving away free information. Oh yeah, there I am again. Okay. Yeah, I get it. We're making fun of me now. All right. Well, anyways, that's number one. Uh, the number two thing that's going to make the biggest difference after that is an instrument. So beyond your voice, if you're using an instrument and that's part of your sound and how you're conveying your music, those are pretty big investments. They take a lot of money. They can be a very personal thing. And that's something that's going to make such a huge difference in what sound you want. If you are a you know, a country singer and you have something like a guitar with, with humbucker pickups and a distorted amp, well, it's going to be a hard time telling your story and getting that emotion, that feel that you want directly to talk to your audience and your fans if you don't have the right sound and the right instrument to do this. And so if you're really going to make a, a, an investment, that's one that's going to show a huge return on, hey, I bought this, I invested in this new high-end acoustic guitar and instantly everything you do is going to sound that much better and make such a difference in your overall sound. The next thing after instruments is one that, you know, this is where you'd insert that meme of, you know, blah, blah, blah. I believe this fight me, you know, or prove me wrong. Uh, but once again, with the, the gentleman I, I referenced earlier, Mr. Jim Lil, he goes over what makes the biggest difference in a guitar tone and breaking it down and one of the things he first touches upon is something that we don't talk about enough as a community of musicians and, and recording artists and all that. But anything that you were ever trying to chase after, any sound that you have that you want to sound like this person, this artist, you know, this group, this time period, whatever it may be, the way that you heard that was through a recording, which was done through a microphone. And microphones make one of the biggest difference that we don't talk about enough. And before anything ever gets to a recording, it has to go through some sort of microphone. And it, you would be really doing yourself a disservice if you put all the effort into learning and writing all this great music and having all these great instruments and all this great way to, to make these amazing sounds, but you didn't take the time to Think about how that sound's going to be changed or altered going through a microphone, which is how your fans are going to hear it. How anybody that's not in that room directly with you at that moment, and I'm talking about in the room, not a live show, just right there in that room with you, which is rare and almost never, 
uh, is going to hear that sound. So microphones are number three for a reason. Like I said, if you don't like that, fight me, fight me, bring it. But it's a huge deal. Uh, right after that, we have cables. And that's that's one that we almost all <laughs> never talk about. And I, it is one that I will be making a full episode about because it's something that you really don't think about. You buy you know, the cheapest version you can find. It's on Amazon. I got a couple cables here or it's ones that you've had sitting around for, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. It's just, it's been there. It works. It's fine. It's fine. You won't even hear them deteriorate. You won't even hear those solder points breaking down over time. And if you're not investing in really good cables when, and I'm talking about, you know, later, if you're learning and you're just starting, that doesn't matter. You know, learning your skills, picking up what's important before this, all the things I just listed, getting lessons and lessons and courses and learning your skills, having a good instrument, that's important. But when it comes down to, and if you're going to take that next step and move up and consider yourself, you know, a semi-professional, a professional, somebody that wants to share their music with the world, cables are such a huge, huge thing in that. And of course, I've said it a couple of times here, and I'm going to just beat that drum a couple more times. If you are talking about getting a high-end cable, be it an instrument cable or a speaker cable, anything at all, patch cables, anything like that, I highly recommend uh, Rattlesnake cables. They, are, Of course, they're local. This is me being honest with you. They don't pay me, but I am biased. Uh, it comes you know, with this amazing workmanship and top of the line. I have been, when I switched to mine, it was such a huge relief. And like I said, that's one of the reasons I want to go into a full episode of that, letting you hear the difference, not just me saying it or somebody selling you something. I want you to be able to hear the difference between using a bad cable or a shoddy cable or a cheap cable on a recording versus a top end, you know, you made a little bit of an investment. It can really make a difference in your sound. So, and here's the one, the next one coming up after that is sound amplification. So we're talking about uh, anything that has to do with, you know, uh, guitar amps, you know, playing your keyboard or your piano through it, uh, your voice being projected through a PA system and speakers. Those things do make a pretty big difference, but they're kind of in the middle of the pack here. As guitar players, we would, of course, fight you on this one because what this should be, you know, you get your guitar and you better have a good amp, but it really doesn't make as big of a difference as you think it does. It is important. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the whole part of having this chain, that's, you know, any weak link in your chain is going to break that thing apart. But sound amplification, sometimes we spend too much time and too much money investing into things that don't mean that much. That can be altered in a different way, a cheaper way, a better way, a faster way, a more reliable way. So that's kind of where that goes. Next one, of course, is one that I had a hard time putting down towards the lower end here and that's sound capture but we were just talking about how people don't hear your sound don't get to hear anything that you produce unless it's captured by some kind of sound so uh, like an audio interface or something to record your music with this is that time this is where you want to start investing in that you've got everything else in line and you're ready to start doing some recordings or go pay for some recordings you know this is where you're going to invest into either getting a high end or a better uh recording interface and going that route or paying a studio to do it but the the god's honest opinion versus 20 15 years ago uh, you know 30 years ago the difference between what you were plugging into record the preamps and, and those things that were recording your sound you know what you paid for is what you got and you know top end dollar sounded better than what what we could afford at home or, or you know versus a, a low end amateur recording artist but today they're really really close the low end interfaces that you're getting for 150 200 dollars 300 500 dollars work pretty much as well just as well as darn near most of them are around you know a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars. They're so close. And if you A B them and be honest with yourself, there's not that much of a difference. But beyond that, right underneath that, I have sound manipulators, and that's things that would just change the sound. So you've already got an established sound with everything before. So things like pedals or or things like that that would just kind of change the sound just a bit. Um not really a high priority. Not something that you should be get running out and buying first and foremost because that's the sound. You heard this, and I think this makes it really doesn't make a big sound difference in the end. Yes, it can make an overall 
beautiful part of your chain, especially when it comes down to adding those effects and those textures, but their textures build the house first, make the foundation, build the walls, don't texture things before there's nothing there to texture. So, and of course, very last is just, I threw everything else under small things in the very end. And that's just things that we, we sometimes overthink, but we have been hit over the head with the advertisement stick, like uh, strings or picks or, you know, those, those things that really don't make such a huge difference, but we tell ourselves they do. Um, that goes under this category. And it's, it's not that we don't need them and they don't make a difference, but they should be categorized and, and prioritized lower towards the bottom. All right. Well, it takes care of that. Like I said, that's free. Please go use it. It's out there. It's, uh, a great asset. Like I said, I wish I had had earlier. I'll include a video on the Patreon link that will explain how to use it if you don't want to go over this video again. So you'll have that. And it's always available. You can have it on your computer, your phone, like I said before, a great use. So thank you so much. I'm just going to take a couple seconds here before we're done. If you're still here for some reason, that means that we're probably friends at this point. And I want to start adding in for those that are staying around till the end, just a, a little personal touch. And I'm calling it uh, Wings Recommendations and just going to give you a little insight into what I think is going on in the music world or something that I think that I've heard before that maybe you haven't thought about or heard that might add something to your thought process when you're songwriting or think about production or that kind of thing. But this week, I really want to talk about one song in particular. And after a whole year of some of the worst things that can happen to you. The Foo Fighters went through a lot, and Dave Grohl in particular, losing their drummer, Taylor Hawkins, and losing his mother uh, could not have been easy. And they came back with this album that released on June 2nd here. Uh, and the album's called uh, But Here We Are. And it is just next level amazing depth, insightful. I mean, if you want to talk about a masterclass on songwriting, this is it. And there's one song in particular called Show Me How, I believe it's sex, uh, track six, but he, he did the song with his daughter and the harmonies and the, just the level of thought that went into this song, it just envelops you with this warmth and this great feeling of this is what music should be. This is how good it could be if I, if you really want to get into music and, and do that kind of thing. So I just want to share that with you. If that's something you might be into, please go take a listen to it. You won't regret it, especially if you are into harmonies in any way and you love that thing. Oh, they're just beautiful. And whatever, I believe her name's Violet Grohl, but I'll, if not, I'll put it down below and correct myself. But whatever she did, like, like fan plus one right here. I am in. I'm all in. Whatever that girl does, I am all in. So take a listen to that. Thank you guys again for being here. It was really great to have you. And go get that free sound priority list. Hopefully that helps you out. And I will see you on the next one. Have a great one. Bye.